Welcome back guys to another Odyssey video. A lot of people are always questioning which engravings should be used for their build. Which is better than the other one, for example, is damage swords really better than critical damage or is armor penetration really so good and why? So I've decided to make a complete ranking to answer all of these questions once and for all. So you will get the best 15 damage perks for Assassin's Creed Odyssey in a definitive order. This list will be backed up by all the testing and all the math I have done for all my builds and all my testing in previous videos. So as long as you also understand how the game actually works, you will definitely agree to this list. Of course ranking only the stuff that actually deals damage will not include the defensive perks and it will also exclude other stuff. I'm planning to do a second video for all the defensive perks so that you actually understand why nobody should ever use armor or health and will also not talk about all the trash stuff which is adrenaline, which have plenty anyway, it will just block any of your spots if you use it, we will not use any movement speed while crouching, we will not talk about any low health bonuses because they won't be useful anyway. And regarding situational bonuses you also have to understand that all these ability enhancers that give you 20% damage for devastating shot, for predator shot, for whatever ability will only ever give you 20% base damage. So they are just as strong as 20% warrior damage or 20% hunter damage. And that means that almost 80% of all the legendary engravings are weaker than one of the most standard engravings in the game. So we will not only show you legendary engravings because the standard engravings are vastly outperforming most of the legendary ones. And to make a proper comparison I will also assume you already have a 100% crit chance in your build. That means wherever possible you already use 20% crit chance at full health and 10% crit chance. So I won't list crit chance engravings because they are mandatory. And of course only have to use the full health stuff because the low health stuff is completely rubbish. Any low health bonuses would only start below 25% when you are at full health or even below 6.25% when you use the Fox of Olympus. So they are extremely rubbish because you don't want to get into that territory with your health. But now let's finally start the ranking. On place number 15 I place 10% all damage. It is really important to know that all damage will never increase your poison, fire, critical damage or headshot damage. It only works for your three base damage types. And it also stacks on your existing warrior damage, so if you add 10% on 400 it will only be 2.5% in reality. On place number 14 we have 40% fire damage and 40% poison damage. The reason these two engravings are so weak even though they have a value of 40% is due to the fact that they are not being multiplied by weapon damage. Without any weapon damage 20% warrior damage would be weaker than fire and poison damage. But at 100% weapon damage your warrior damage will be equal to 40% fire or poison damage. And if you even further increase it to 140% weapon damage your 20% warrior damage will turn into 48% and beating even the fire and poison damage engraving. That's the reason why on number 13 we have 20% warrior damage or 20% hunter and assassin damage. 20% for any base type is more than 40% fire or poison damage. And if you also consider that you will have mostly one preferred playstyle then 20% for that playstyle will be better than having 10% all damage. On number 12 we have 50% headshot damage. 50% headshot damage actually works like critical damage. Headshot is nothing different, it will multiply all your base damage similar like critical damage does it. The only difference to critical damage is that headshot damage obviously only works for your arrows and only when you hit the head of your enemies. That is also the reason why headshot damage is normally never used. Critical damage just works the same and 50% crit damage just works for your whole enemy for every playstyle for every every attack soon. That's why number 11 is 50% critical damage. It just works way better than headshot damage and it works for warrior and assassin as well. It just multiplies all your base damage no matter if you want to deal assassin, hunter or warrior damage with 50%. So critical damage is a multiplier but it is by far not the strongest one. Because critical damage is beaten by weapon damage. 20% damage with swords, 20% damage with daggers, blunts or spears, whatever weapon type will outperform 50% critical damage. The math behind it is actually not really straightforward to understand, but let's assume you have 500% warrior damage and 600% critical damage. If you only increase the critical damage by 50% you will only get a moderate increase, but if you add the additional weapon damage multiplier you will get way more damage instead of just stacking on your critical damage. That is the power of having an additional multiplier, it basically multiplies your multiplier. 
On number 9 we have our first legendary engraving with 100% headshot damage but 50% increased adrenaline consumption. These 100% headshot damage are basically the same as the 50% headshot damage. They act like critical damage but they only work when you use arrows and when you make headshots. The good thing about this engraving is that you can use it instead of 20% warrior damage or 20% assassin damage on one of your armor items. So it will not overlap with an existing critical damage which would normally be considered to be better. You can use this additionally when you make a hunter build and make it just crazily strong. This engraving can be unlocked on Corfu Island when you solve the captain and the Cyclops Ostraka and the solution for it is in Aleo's village. But on place number 8 of course we have 100% critical damage at full health. 100% critical damage simply beats headshot damage because it works for every playstyle for hunter, warrior and assassin and it works for every hit soon of your enemy. So it will always be applied as long as you are at maximum health. Which is actually easy to achieve because every time you heal yourself you will be automatically at full health and you will literally stay at full health forever if done correctly. And of course even when you use the Fox of Olympus engraving, staying at 25% health will still count as full health. And better than 100% critical damage of course is again our weapon damage multiplier. 30% damage sword, 30% damage with heavy blunts or whatever will beat 100% critical damage in terms of damage output. In our little example with 500% warrior damage and 600% critical damage, adding 100% additional critical damage will again be less than having the additional weapon damage multiplier. So you have to understand that weapon damage will always be stronger because it basically also multiplies your critical damage. So what can be better than weapon damage? Well the answer is some ridiculously high overpowered engraving such as 200% headshot damage. If you are a hunter player or if you want to make a range attack build then this engraving is almost a must have. It works like 200% critical damage when you make headshots and you sacrifice just a little bit of your warrior and assassin damage which you would normally never need anyway. Even if you use a big hand bow and you use your warrior damage for your hunter build this engraving is just too good to pass. The 200% headshot damage can be unlocked when you acquire the second side bow from the pirate warehouse on Corfu Island. And what can be better than 200% headshot damage? Of course after headshot follows 200% critical damage. This crazy engraving can be unlocked when you get the Typhoon's Axe. And instead just for headshots it will work for the whole body and for all playstyles. But it has a slight downside that it only works whenever you activate your flaming attacks ability. So that's a huge setback and it only works on axes. However I recently made a good sword build that can also use this engraving. But in general all these negative effects prevent it from getting a higher ranking. On place number 4 we have armor penetration. Armor penetration gives you the equivalent value of around 100% base damage for your warrior and hunter attacks. And compared to the Fox engraving it doesn't have any negative effects. It works as a reverse multiplier that lowers your enemy's armor and therefore multiplies your damage by a huge amount. The weaker your attacks are, especially with daggers, swords and arrows, the stronger is the bonus you get from this ability. Armor penetration is unlocked by the Atlantean blade which you will acquire when you complete the whole Fidel questline. But I still place the Fox engraving one spot higher because it gives you 100% base damage to all hunter, warrior and also your assassin damage. So the Fox engraving works for all three base types even though you have the negative effect from your health. But health can almost be completely neglected in this game because you will never die from a single hit anyway. You will always be down to one hit point and you can heal yourself and continue to fight. The Fox of Olympus which unlocks this engraving can be looted from an underwater location north of Terra Island. And the second best engraving in the entire game is the damage conversion. Especially the hunter damage conversion. Because when you play with the big hunt bow you won't need your hunter damage. And the damage conversion converts your unused hunter damage to be usable warrior and assassin damage. Damage conversion can give you around 140-160% to 160 base damage and it doesn't have any negative effect. The damage conversion will be unlocked when you forge a spear in the third episode of the Atlantis DLC. However this high amount of damage can only be achieved together with the number one engraving which is the Corfo engraving, the champion Ostraka. The 100% damage but minus 100% resistances will not only give you 200% instead of the written 100% but with the damage conversion you will get 300% warrior and assassin damage basically from that single engraving. So half of the damage in almost every build will just come from using the Corfo engraving plus the damage conversion. Which 
which is totally crazy. Anything else is just a lot weaker than these two together. In order to get the Corfu engraving, you have to travel to Corfu Island, go to the Kolaidi farm in the north, and then solve the riddle at the docks in the northeastern part of the map. And 300% warrior and assassin damage also means that it is way better than the yumminess engraving with its poor 250% and you can still use your abilities with the champion Ostraka and the damage conversion, which you cannot do with the yumminess. Which is also the reason why I did not include the yumminess engraving, because by blocking your ability multipliers, which can deal 4 times, 6 times or even 18 times the damage, you will only lower your damage. So this was all about how to get the highest damage and how to prioritize your damage engravings in your build. I will make a separate video for the defensive perks, so stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, of course, you can also simply watch the build videos to see these engravings put into action. I hope this video really helped you. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time. <laughs>